Today I am going to be drawing this black leopard in colored pencil. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today we are going to be focusing on how to draw black fur on an animal and getting a blurry background. I have drawn this using polychromos and luminance colored pencils. The colors that I used are all listed below in the video description, and I did this on fawn stonehenge paper. I purchased this in large individual sheets. It is not the stonehenge that comes in the pad of paper. There is a difference in the finish. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this video complete with voiceover tutorial is available for you guys now. Now let's get on to the demonstration. Starting out on my background, I want this to be fairly out of focus, and the trick to doing this is just not to add a lot of sharp, tiny detail. I'm using lots and lots of different colors, varying shades of browns and greens. Those colors that I've used are below in the video description. I am slightly overlapping all of these colors into whatever color is next to it. Once I had about three or four or five layers on there of colored pencil, I blended that out with paint thinner. I do have a video showing you exactly how to do that. I will have a card pop up if you need to see that. So I'm adding additional layers. I let the paint thinner dry on the paper before I added more layers, added several layers of colored pencil, and then blended it out again with paint thinner. Let it dry, and now I'm back to adding more layers. If you do not add enough layers with your colored pencil, don't expect the paint thinner to make everything look nice and smooth. It takes so many layers. Every piece that I work on probably has a good 20 layers of colored pencil on it. If you don't have enough layers on there, you're just going to have a grainy, gritty look that looks very much like crayon. So now I'm moving on to the next section, again layering various shades of browns, grays, and greens. For the background, I'm not terribly worried about the actual colors that I'm using or any details or anything like that. I just need it to be nice and soft. lightening that up and then blending it out with paint thinner and then I will go back over it with more colored pencil. One of the main questions I get from people about colored pencils is that they're not able to get the same effect that I can with their paint thinner and almost every single time the problem is that there isn't enough layers of colored pencil on the paper. Take your time, add lots of layers. Blending that first set of layers out with paint thinner, I will let that dry and then I'm going to go right back over it again. Now we'll continue this process until I have the color saturation that I want and I have lost all of that grainy gritty feel. As long as you're using a light hand when you apply the colored pencil, you can apply so many layers. If you're using Prismacolor, you're going to be slightly limited because those do have such a high wax bloom, but the paint thinner will help remove some of that wax bloom, allowing you to add even more layers. If you're using polychromos or luminance, you're fairly unlimited as long as you're not pushing hard and damaging the tooth of the paper. I'm adding this kind of grayish cream color over all of that green just to push everything back and make it all blend in with each other. I'm adding some detailed or brightening up some areas with the white pencil, but be careful not to overdo it when you want this soft blurry background. It's so easy to go back through and add extra details just to make the background look better, but you don't want that here. We want this to be very, very soft. You'll get all of your details in your subject, which will give you the dimension that you want in the piece when you're doing a blurry background. So resist the urge to add lots of details. I've got lots of colors, but they all overlap into each other. There's no teeny tiny small detail there. Onto the ear for my first layer, I am blocking in the general location of where my lights and my darks go. I'm not too worried about details here. I just want to get that blocked in and blend it out with paint thinner. I let it dry and now I can start building up more details. While that first ear dries, I'm going to go back onto the second ear and do the same exact thing, blocking in just loosely where my lights and my darks go. I will blend that out with paint thinner, and while that ear dries, I'm going to skip back over to the first ear and add additional detail. On the Stonehenge paper especially, it is a very soft paper, so you don't want to work with over an area that is still wet from the paint thinner. Make sure that it's dry so that you don't damage the paper. So I just work back and forth between the two ears, slowly building up detail as I go. The white that I'm adding is showing up really well because it is that luminance white, which shows up great against dark colors. 
for the eyes, I'm using mainly shades of green and gray. Paying close attention to my reference photo there. I first loosely block in the color. And this time, normally when I do white, I leave the white of the paper showing through for the, the bright, bright highlight here. It's just a, a slight reflection of light. It's not as bright. So I'm able to draw in the eye without worrying about leaving the white showing through. And then after the eye dried, I went over with a white pencil, the white luminance, to get that shine in the eye. But it didn't need to be white, so I didn't need to leave the paper showing through like I normally do. Now working on to the fur, I am using blues, blacks, magenta, purple, so many different colors here. Those are listed below in the video description. And I'm paying very, very close attention to the direction of the fur. How long each of those pencil marks is, too, really matters. For example, I don't want to put the long pencil marks on the bridge of the nose or it won't look right because that fur is very, very short and sleek. The main thing that you want to notice here, as I'm doing the black fur, very little of it is flat black. And really none of it is just black pencil. Even where I use the black pencil, I will layer blue, magenta, red. Lots of colors get layered on top of that so that the black does not appear flat. But throughout the animal, everywhere where there are highlights and reflections, there's so many colors on there which prevents him from looking flat. If you want your animal to look flat, use straight black and you'll be all set. But if you're wanting to get the depth and dimension and make him look more realistic, you want to use lots of colors. Now, I ended up hyping up my colors even more than on my reference photo because it, when I edited the photo in Photoshop after I took the photo, I realized I really liked more purple and blue. So I went back and added even more. So I do have more bold purples and blues than were in the reference photo. So mine's a bit more extreme. But you do either way, even if you don't want to have something this extreme, you are going to want to add those blues and purples. Usually you're going to have whatever colors were in your background in reflecting in the fur. Here, because I have a green background, I don't want green fur. I don't like that look at all. So what I ended up doing is taking a lot of the reds that I added to the leopard's fur and adding that back into my green background. So that's how I tied my background in with my leopard here. But if my sky was blue or red, I would be pulling those same colors into the leopard to make sure that they both look like they're a part of the same scene because black does reflect so much of its surroundings at least if the fur is very glossy. Still making very sure I pay attention to how long each of these pencil lines are and that they're going in the right direction. That is so important. If you just put random lines all over the place, the fur will look stiff and very unnatural. Here, when I wanted a more translucent color, I stuck with my polychromos. When I needed a color that was going to show up well against the black, like really stand out, I used the luminance, which are more opaque. Onto the forehead, I don't have a lot of brush strokes up here. That fur is very dense and very soft. You're not going to see many individual brush strands of fur. So I need to block it in first fairly solid, just getting where each color is going to go blocked in. Then I blend that out with paint thinner. And then I'm going to let that dry and go back on top of it. Slowly building up the detail in the fur. But again, I don't go too crazy adding individual strands of fur in that in his forehead. I want that to that fur to look dense and soft. And even here where I leave it pretty dark, I still have a lot of the purples and reds adding additional detail on the ear there and blocking in the spots on the side of the face. Then I've come back through with a white pencil and added some highlights into the forehead. You can see I've got some individual strands of fur mixed in on the forehead, but it's very subtle. I don't want to get anything too defined in that area. As I move on to the side of the face, I'm going to first lay down a lot of blue, purple, and then come back through with magenta as my base. I'm going to do several layers like that and really get those colors rich. Once those are blocked in, I will come back through with some brown on top of that, but the blues and purples and magenta colors are all still going to show through that brown. I'm not really worrying about fur or direction of the fur. I'm going to come back through later on with the gray violet luminance pencil to add in the individual strands of fur. 
As you can see, this is just a very long layering process. I do have a video showing you how I use Photoshop to figure out which color I'm needing for any given area on a piece, and I'll put a link to that video. A card should pop up on the screen so you can check that out. Now I'm using the gray violet color, which is fairly opaque and light enough that it shows up quite well against those darker colors. So I've got the strands of fur actually blocked in now, adding little details around the face. And I've used that same color to add some extra details in the ears as well. Now for the neck, I'm going to do that the same way. I'm adding black first because I do need that to be darker, but then I added the magenta and the purple, blended that out with paint thinner, let it dry, and then added additional layers on top of that. And don't worry so much about your color being the exact, exact right color. It's your values that matter. Make sure your darks are as dark as they should be and your lights are as light as they should be. That's what's going to make your piece look more realistic. Now I'm not adding quite as much detail with individual fur strokes for the neck here. I don't want this to be my focus. So I'm keeping it pretty soft and then I will blend over all of that with the paint thinner. Once I get the neck blocked in, I can come back through and start focusing on the details in the the hair on the chin. I needed to wait until the neck was in there first before I could get those details in though. In every single place that you see on this piece where I've got solid black, I've got other colors mixed in over or under it, or both, so that I get a nice rich color and don't have a flat black. For the body, you want to think of this more in terms of abstract shapes than trying to look at it as, here's a leopard shoulder. It's hard to understand where to put your lights and darks that way. If you just look at your reference photo and see the abstract shapes and copy those abstract shapes, it makes it much easier to tackle. This reference photo, by the way, is from wildlifereferencephotos.com, so if you want to draw this leopard, you can pick that up and see exactly what it is that I'm talking about here. I've got my first layers on there and I blend that out with paint thinner and I'm going to add additional layers until I get the skin or the coat here as smooth as I'm looking for. I wanna get rid of all of that grainy look and I will continuously add more and more layers until that is all smooth. You can see I'm much lighter than I'm going to need to go but I can layer my darker colors right on top of those light areas. I just continuously add more and more darks until I get it exactly how I want it. Another trick for working on an area like this where the shapes seem so abstract is to work upside down. It helps your brain to see it as shapes instead of trying to force a leopard shoulder that doesn't look quite right. Once I get all of these colors layered in how I want, I go back through with my white luminance pencil and better define my whiskers. And that is pretty much it for this guy. You can see drawing black fur is not that difficult. There are a lot of colors that you're going to add in there. Now I did end up going back through and deciding that I wanted even more blues and purples. So I layered my polychromos, which are fairly translucent, back over some of those areas in the face to pull out the blues and purples and make them stronger. Prints are available of this guy in my Fine Art America store. I will put a link to that in the video description. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this video complete with voiceover is available for you guys now. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speak paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists each Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, all those social media sites. The links are below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tiny Crab, you are making way too much noise over there. Why are you climbing on the roof of your cage? Hermit crabs are weird. People who own hermit crabs are probably weirder though.